join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Forum IAS's uh, sociology short video series. Uh, in this series, we've been looking at some very important uh, concepts, topics, themes, and we try to offer meaningful uh, value additional content uh, within a span of eight to 12 minutes. Uh, for today's, uh, for this particular uh, video, uh, I want to draw your attention to, again, something that is usually not discussed sociologically, uh, which is the French Revolution. When we are doing Unit 1 of Paper 1, we do this, right? We discuss the French Revolution, but we don't really think about the French Revolution sociologically. We think about the French Revolution pretty much the way any typical GS student is also going to think about the estate system, the taxation, the American War of Independence and how it sort of affected, um, you know, the French, uh, particularly the soldiers who returned and so on, the exploitative society, you know, the Bourbon dynasty, etc. But what about sociological? So if you have to write a sociological note on the French Revolution, what would that be, right? How would that uh, be different? So you need to write a completely different note uh, as compared to uh, a typical GS note. So for example, if you have to write the introduction, you can refer to something in sociology, what we call political Modernism. Political modernism in the sense that it was the French Revolution that in many ways led to the emergence of the modern world. There are many historians and, and, and scientists, uh, political scientists and philosophers who agree that the French Revolution essentially uh, brings into existence or brought to the fore the modern world, the world of nation states, right? Uh, so the, wor the political world as we know today is essentially one that emerged after the French Revolution. So one could think about the French Revolution in terms of a certain kind of political modernism, right? The French Revolution could also be considered as one of the most defining moments in uh, in the recent past, because it leads to a lot of developments that were in many ways unprecedented. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> when we are talking about the French Revolution, we'll have to then, so you have referred to that, its importance in the introduction itself. Uh, then you come to the crux. Now in the crux, we can always bring about thinkers. Now remember, there are thinkers who have glorified the French Revolution, and there are thinkers who have questioned the French Revolution. For example, there is Durkheim, who has glorified the French Revolution. In two of his works, in elementary forms of religious life, Durkheim has written about the French Revolution and has glorified uh, basically, he says that the French Revolution is an instance that tells us about how the society sacralizes itself. It's a glorious, dramatic, historical instance of society sacralizing itself. So, this is a very famous uh, statement, hai, argument, that the French Revolution is how the society becomes so sacred, how the society acquires a certain collective, a very powerful uh, aura around itself. Uh, in this way, uh, there is another work wherein Durkheim talks about f the French Revolution as a stage, wherein the first 
signs of collective effervescence in the modern world can be seen. The first moments of collective effervescence. In fact, unka ek aur bhi phrase hai, cult of the individual. Aur wo kehte hain ki cult of the individual ki jo shuruat hai, wo French Revolution se. Ye ho gaya aapke. Praise, right? Someone like Durkheim, who is, of course, praising. But then you also have thinkers who are not very happy about the revolution. Karl Marx, for example, had all kinds of nasty things to say about the French Revolution. So Marx says, he's very clear, that the French Revolution emancipated the people politically, but not completely. So his argument is that the French Revolution emancipated the people only politically and not truly. Matlab, basically, unka argument is that the proletarian revolution is the only revolution that gives people to give people to the whole French Revolution gives people to political freedom. But eventually, this is going to be pointless, this is going to be meaningless, because French Revolution state ke khilaf kuch nahi karta hai. There is no anti-statism in it. The revolutionaries, right, who were at the forefront during the French Revolution, according to Karl Marx, the revolutionaries could not see the problem with the apparatus of the state. And you can't understand that the state is a part of bourgeois people's hands. It's just in the hands of, it's a machine in the hands of the bourgeoisie. Now, these revolutionaries could not see that. So there was no, Marx says, there was no anti-statism. And in that sense, French Revolution logon ko emancipate to karta hai. Logon ko ek tariqe ki azadi to deta hai. But ye azadi, puri azadi nahi hai. Right? It's, it does not emancipate people wholly, yet truly. It emancipates people only politically. So now these are some references which are important references. Ho jate hai, right? Now the only thing that brings in more value, one is of course, and many times it happens, students simply write that according to Marx it was a bourgeois revolution that did not really have the right sensibilities etc. Now while this is right, it is also a bit vague. So when you are providing an information, your information also needs to be a bit more authentic. You need to convince the examiner that here is the information he or she has been looking for. So you cite. Cite ka matlab ye hai, ki agar aap text ka reference de de. For example, aap ne Durkheim ka ek argument bataya, aur phir aap ne ye bhi bata diya ki Durkheim ne ye argument kaun se text me diya hai. Elementary forms of religious life. Division of labor in society. You have Marx's argument, and you have said that Marx's argument is not the same as the argument. Where exactly has Marx written about this? On the Jewish question, 18th Brumaire. Right? So, if you have text ka bhi reference, de diya, right? And then you have argument, bhi de diya, now that is where you have a decisive edge. Aur agar aapne, so, there are three ways. One is, you don't give an argument, you just work with the GS stuff. That's really bad, terrible stuff. Doesn't take you anywhere. Dusra hai, aapne GS se thoda hat ke answer likha. Kuch kuch aapne arguments de, lekin aapne sources nahi de paai. Thik hai, paraphrase karke likha hai. That's still a degree better. The third, which in my opinion is the best, it's the ideal, is you have given a sociological answer and to the extent possible, you have also offered sources. That's where uh, the right answer is. And in the foundation program, this is precisely what we try to do. We offer credible sociological insights. Now, just AC is related. Jitne bhi Durkheim ke or Marx ke or bahut se or arguments hain, inka references. Ki bhai is kitab mein ya essay, etc, etc. Just to make sure that your answer acquires more uh, weightage and therefore it becomes more scoring. Right? So that will be all in relation to sociological reading of the French Revolution. Thank you very much for your time. All the very best for your preparation.